As we age, it seems to get harder and harder to stay in shape. Genetics, of course, play their part, but so too does our lifestyle and the hard fact that our bodies become less efficient over time. The good news is there's a lot we can do about it, including staying active and, of course, through what we eat. We all know that dieting is dull and joyless, but I have learned over the years that just a few key changes can make a very big difference. So here's what works for me. So when I was a teenager, I could literally eat anything I wanted, as often as I wanted, while staying stick thin. I had a ridiculously sweet tooth. I would make trays of fudge and toffee and eat half of it in one sitting without putting on a single pound. But that all changed when I hit 20 and suddenly I started putting on weight for the first time. So like a lot of students, I was drinking beer, I was eating high carb, high fat foods like pizzas and donuts and lots of sweet stuff, but I could no longer shake off those calories. And instead, in one summer, um, I went from eight stone to 10 stone, quite a lot of partying that summer. So that's from 50 kilograms to 63 kilograms in, in just a few months. And I'd never dieted in my life before. So there I was with two stone to lose. I had no idea how to do it. So I started eating horrible diet yogurts full of sweeteners and I was trying to avoid desserts and chocolate and the things I loved. I was making low fat kind of bland sauces but adding them to a big serving of pasta or rice and almost as if pastas and rice were calorie neutral and you know of course they're not. I just had no idea what I was doing. Um, so you know although I lost maybe a couple of pounds I was really struggling to make a difference and I was craving the foods I loved which kind of made me binge eat them when I had the chance so I'd go for days without chocolate and then I'd eat a load of it all at once. One day I was in a bookshop sort of browsing the shelves and I noticed this ridiculously named book. It was called Eat Orgasmically and Still Lose Weight by Dr. Diana Jepson and Really, it was just a book of common sense, but it made a big impact on me because what she was saying is it's not so much what we eat that makes us gain weight, but how much of it we're eating. And she believed in stopping eating before you feel full. So when your appetite is satiated, but you're not feeling that kind of heaviness in your stomach. So you're giving your body a better chance to digest the meal and you're consuming fewer calories. So she talked about portion control and just putting less on your plate while still eating the foods that you love. And it was like a flick of the switch for me. It took all the pressure of dieting away and it also took those huge cravings away. You know, I could have have, have a bit of what I wanted every day, but in moderation. Eating what I wanted in moderation pretty much carried me through the next 20 years at a fairly consistent weight of around eight and a half stones, so roughly 54 kilos. And there was a second factor at play, which I think has been really important in helping me maintain a healthy weight. So by resisting the idea of dieting and instead just following my body's natural cues over when I feel hungry, stopping eating before I start to feel full, I also got into a pattern where I stopped eating breakfast because I just wasn't feeling hungry first thing. So now I have a couple of coffees in the morning, uh, plenty of tap water with it, and then I don't usually eat until about 10.30 in the morning. Um, and then later in the day, I will stop eating pretty much after my dinner. Occasionally I might have a piece of fruit early in the evening. Um, but what it means is I'm only generally eating between about 10 a.m. in the morning and 8 p.m. at night. So that means naturally I'm not deliberately fasting, but I am fasting for 14 of every 24 hours. And that seems to suit my body. You know, it's no hardship on my part to do it. And it allows my body the chance to rest, recover, divert energy elsewhere where it's needed because it's not processing food for a full 14 hours at a time. 
So it also naturally reduces my calorie intake and particularly during those hours when I'm not very active. So over the last year, I've actually dropped a few pounds to become the lightest now that I've been since my teens without consciously trying to do it. And I think there's another couple of factors that have come into the mix over the last year. So one is that I have increased the amount of exercise that I do. So I not only walk the dog every day now, which I've been doing for years, but I now do a little resistance training as well using resistance bands and I do um, floor exercises like press ups and planks and I'm building my muscle strength because we lose muscle mass as we age. And um, we also know that the fitter we become, the more calories we burn, even when we're not active. So that is a win-win situation. And crucially, I've also increased the amount and variety of plant-based foods that I eat over the last year. So I haven't cut out meat, but I eat less meat and more fish and all those all important plant-based foods. So I try to eat multiple colors of fruit and vegetables each day for variety. I'm really big on kale. I buy the whole leaves rather than the pre-shredded and I take out the stalks and then I sort of chop it into salads and curries and sauces, you know, you, you name it, you can use it in so much, even salsa. Um, and it's an excellent source of fiber and one of the most nutrient dense foods around. So it's a great one to include in your diet regularly. Now increasing our plant fiber intake is also one of the best things we can do for our gut health. So we're basically feeding the good bacteria in our gut and helping them to thrive and work as efficiently as possible to help us digest food, but to also support our immune system and even our brain function. And if you want to learn more about the benefits of eating plant fiber for gut health, check out this video that I recorded with gut health doctor Megan Rossi. By eating a diet that's high in plant fiber, I feel it energizes me and just gets me firing on all cylinders. So the more energized we feel, the more active we are. So it's, kind of, it's, a, it's like a positive cycle. And I'm also not avoiding natural fats. So I'm not eating a low fat diet. I eat a lot of nuts each day and they are higher in fat, but they're mainly healthier fats. And there is so much science around unsaturated versus saturated fats and monounsaturated and polyunsaturated and trans fats, you know, it's just too confusing. So I go now with what's natural and I'll eat a small amount of fat from dairy, but I'm mainly getting it from things like coconut, groundnut and olive oils, uh, plant-based yogurts, seeds and nuts on a day-to-day -day basis. And they give me energy and they keep my appetite satiated. And I believe a moderate amount of healthier natural fats each day is good for us. So around uh, 10.30 every morning, I'll have a bowl of raw porridge oats and I add a big handful of hazelnuts or walnuts and then I'll add in berries and an underripe sliced banana to kind of bulk it out. I might add in seeds and then I'll stir through some live coconut or oat yogurt and that keeps me going for hours and it's a really great delicious start to the day. It's not necessarily low fat but it's healthy, it's full of nutrients, and it keeps me feeling fuller for longer. So ultimately, I'm eating less and I'm eating better. And in the afternoon, I might, on a very good day, eat a healthy snack like hummus with raw vegetables. But I've also got a really sweet tooth. So I tuck into dark chocolates with hazelnuts, or sometimes I'll smear peanut butter over pieces of dark chocolate. On other days, I go all out and I'll just have a, a cream egg or another chocolate bar, but I am not a saint when it comes to diet. For me, it is just about variety and moderation. For dinner, I'm trying to pack in the plant fiber. So I'm putting that into sauces. Um, I'm eating in stir fries. Uh, I'll have mixed vegetables with fish and whole grain rice, particularly in the week where I'm trying to eat better. And it's still tasty stuff, but I then feel like I've kind of earned a few treats, especially by the weekend. So I'll have desserts then, I love baking, I might bake cookies or brownies or cakes, whatever. I can enjoy myself a bit more at the weekend having been good in the week. Finally, 
I drink way less alcohol in my 40s than I did in my 30s and certainly than I did in my 20s. Uh, my husband has stopped drinking alcohol completely and I now probably drink around four glasses of wine a week and that's generally over um, three nights over the weekend and when you consider that a large glass, and this is a very large glass, 250 milliliter glass of wine could contain as much as 200 calories. It's not hard to see how that adds up. So by cutting back or cutting alcohol out altogether, you could radically reduce your calorie intake. You know, heavy drinking as we age, especially, it saps your energy. It causes us to gain weight. It leaves us dehydrated and generally not functioning at our best just when we need our energy. So one or two glasses is enough to relax you and can even be beneficial according to some studies, particularly red wine, which is full of antioxidants. But going beyond that, you start to lose the benefits and you tip then into drinking being a health risk. So if you can, cut it out for a good few nights a week and try to trim back on the weekends too. And I guarantee you won't miss it after a while. So those are my five tips for keeping your weight down in your later years. It's about moderation, using a variety of fresh produce and eating naturally, avoiding processed manufactured foods. You will look better, feel better, and hopefully avoid those dreaded restrictive diets that just leave us miserable. So I hope you found this video helpful. As always, I do love to hear your tips, your experiences and your opinions. So do share them in the comments section below. If you're new to the channel, there are a range of videos to choose from covering beauty, anti-aging and household product reviews. I've tried out some of the major anti-aging treatments that are out there at the moment. And I share uh, my research, experience and opinions on all things from diet, lifestyle and aging. So do check those out if you get the chance. I hope also you'll subscribe so you can join me next time. Until then, thanks for watching.